Several things were interesting for me uh, about the bogeyman and what he's doing. The first thing was the fact that he's doing it all by himself and he creates his own world and he takes his own dreams and makes something out of them. And actually uh, what he's doing uh, during the summer near British Columbia, he would bike and look for places that he can sink in. And um, that le led me to the first observation that I found very interesting, is once you start to understand the process of sinking in mud, you understand that the ground doesn't suck you in. It's a lie. So actually, everything that he's saying is completely bullshit. It's his own imagination while he's investing enormous power and effort in order to stick himself or in order to penetrate into the ground, if I even may say fuck the ground like this, uh, by that time he's uh, narrating something completely different. His, um, uh, his, his um, uh, <laughs> will is to be sucked by the ground when he says uh, it's sucking me down, it's gulping me, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's completely um, uh, not describing what is happening. So that gap between the text and what he's doing, um, that he actually creating the realm of fantasy is something that I found interesting. The second thing was the fact that he creates a complete cycle between his, uh, let's say, the naked eye, the, 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 the natural eye, his eye, and the artificial eye, which is, of course, the camera. And he holds it like this, so there's a cycle of two, uh, thinking about John's work, by the way, like this cycle of, of imaging, look at it, looking at imaging, and then it led me to the question, which I still don't know the answer, because this obviously there's a, there's a sexual uh, uh, obsession here, of course. So I asked myself, where is the obsession? Is it within the physical act of penetrating the ground? Is it about uh, mud touching every, every inch of your body? this sensual feeling, or is it completely about watching, about looking at your death all over again when you're coming at home, and then you can see actually what your natural eye cannot see, because when this apparatus, and I call it an apparatus because that's what he's, to my opinion, doing, this apparatus of th those two eyes are going beneath the surface, there's a point when the natural eye can no longer see, but the artificial eye uh, continue uh, to document and then he could go home and see his own death over and over again. So that's why I also decided to edit this thing as if it was one session but as you may uh, um, uh, look, so it, it, it's taken from different sessions from different years even. So uh, um, and the, the, another thing that I found really interesting was uh, the relationship between or, or the way this kind of film is manifesting itself as a genre. Because when I started to look online, I found out that he's maybe the best, but not the only one. Uh, there are several people around the world that are documenting themselves completely sinking, and dozens of people that are producing those mud fetish films and as many things in life, there's a division between the doers and the viewers. So he's one of the doers, but there's a lot of viewers for this. So um, this is a genre that is being defined by the last shot of, of the video. And this is the only genre I know that behave like that. The, uh, the only genre that I can think that is uh, very connected to this is, of course, porn. And when I thought about the quite, quite, quite essential uh, um, a scene of, of that, that defines porn uh, industry, it's obviously the cam shot. And uh, in, in, in a different way, the cam shot is the way the male body is presenting itself as a fountain for its own liquid, uh, like presenting the inner liquids of the body as if it was an evident, like this, okay? So this is the movement of, okay? And when you think about those uh, mud fetish films, it's all in a reverse. It's like the cam shot in reverse because the, 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 most, uh, the, the most powerful moment, the climatic moment, the orgasm of those movies is when the body disappears, when you have no longer image, when you have a clean surface. 
And for me as a video artist who deals with the surface a lot, that was something that I found uh, very, how would I say, uh, revealing about the medium itself. So there were a lot of things that I um, thought about this phenomena, but at that point I realized that I need to do something by myself uh, because the bogeyman is the bogeyman, but this is the time for me to do something with that. So I asked the bogeyman to uh, introduce me to this world and I became a member uh, at the forum of uh, deep thinking. So if you ask yourself what's going on there, so there are many people who are posting things, so it could be uh, like an archive of all the squeaks and scenes from all the movies ever. It could be small uh, companies, uh, production companies, who uh, make those kind of, of uh, um, videos, or, or beauty shops, if, if you may call this like this. And in certain point, there was a turning point for me when uh, the bogeyman said, you know what? Um, I should introduce you to the guy that, is, uh, that can help you. And I, said, I asked, like, who is this guy? And he said, there's a guy in Arkansas that calls himself Fred588. And Fred588 is from the other genre. He's a viewer. He's not a doer. So Fred588 uh, has a cabin in the woods and three mud pits that he owns that he dug with his own hands. And he see that as a small production company to produce those mud fetish films. So I thought, well, this is the best setup I can imagine to do something because I wouldn't take the risk of going to the wilderness and just, you know, uh, stick myself into the mud. So I, I, I got in contact with the guy. This is his site. Um, he's offering all those amazing facilities, those three mud pits, and the archives of all the movies that he's making. As you can see, it's, uh, he has a lot of movies. Uh, quicksand Volume 1, it's Quicksand Volume 2, 3, 4, all our compilation of three or four short movies that he makes. And he sells them to the community for the price of uh, 30 bucks for one DVD. That means that if he sells like 10, he could cover the expense of one production. This is roughly the business, okay? So um, this, is, this is the cabin, this is his crew. Uh, this is one of his sets. I, I started to research to see, like, what can I do with that? And then I understood that I need to come with my own idea. I contacted the guy and I said, again, I'm a student from Columbia University. I'm an artist. I want to do something. He was very suspicious, but then I said, like, the bogeyman sent me. And he said, okay. <laughs> so I can rent you the facility. So we also, make a we also made a deal, by the way. Uh, because I didn't have money, so he said, like, if you would make a film for me, in my kind of style, I will uh, give you 50% discount. Of course, I agreed. So, here I am, I have all the facilities, now I only need to have an idea. So, uh, at some point, the idea came, this is the kitchen, this was the idea. I thought that uh, instead of all those uh, films that are based on the movement of sinking like this, uh, which is submergence, I should deal with emergence in a way. So I imagine the clean surface of mud and then something start to pop out of, from the mud and you discover, the viewer discover that it's like heads of people, maybe, and those heads are breathing through plastic tubes that are going through the mud outside of the pit to the woods and then uh, circling, going around the branches of the trees and at the end of each one of them there's a flute wooden recorder and then in some point, mud starts to float through the tubes and to pop out from the recorders. Uh, this is some kind of an apparatus, maybe a breathing system that I wanted uh, to create. So we went down to Arkansas. I convinced three of my friends um, to go down there. So this is us going down. This is the first uh, day of shooting. Uh, some of you may recognize um, my, some of my friends. Uh, you will see. Uh, so this is our, uh, our first day. So just to tell you, um, there's a genre within this industry that's called First Time in Mud, which is a documentary genre within the many genres that are all being uh, um, <laughs> played there. And the First Time in Mud is actually like uh, when you invite the model to do those 
thinking, thinking things. So when she, I say she because 99% of the people that are being uh, filmed are women and uh, the 99% of the industry is being watched by men. You can imagine that. Nothing surprising here. Uh, so, uh, so this was our first time in MUD. And this is us, um, um, some of my friends. Um, uh, Fred's uh, face are, is covered because uh, Fred's doesn't want anybody to know who he is. Fred's is a professor for physical education in some university, which he would not tell us. And uh, he lives double life, like a secret life, because in the summer he would go uh, to his cabin in the woods and uh, do those movies, uh, make those movies. So this is uh, Liz Magic Laser, who some, some of you may know, uh, uh, now a famous artist, so she was one of us. This is uh, Fred, uh, and Fred is for me similar to the bogeyman in the sense that he's also a one-man band in a way, because this is how he edits his films. He's making the music, he's editing, he is filming, he's writing, and he's doing everything. That's his dream. This is me and Fred. Uh, this is Liz again. And this is a Christian, the uh, that's uh, with us tonight. Hi, Christian. And uh, he was brave enough um, to come with me as well. So this is us. Uh, uh, we discovered that it's a very sensual experience to go under and you need earplugs because uh, the mud gets everywhere and it takes like 20 minutes to get it out of your body. This is me and, and uh, Eldad, my friend. Also, one of the things that we discovered is that you, uh, uh, my friend Eldad was bald and every time that he would pop out from the mud, the mud would fall from his head and I, d I didn't like it. So I asked Fred if he has wigs and apparently he had them. So uh, we used them and also goggles and also we had um, a night shot um, uh, and it was really creepy because we didn't uh, think in advance that if you turn on like a 5k uh, volt light in the woods at night, very weird animals are attracted to that. <laughs> and at, at the end it turned to be, this is like the big jump, it turned to be um, a two-channel video installation that I may show you maybe, yes, I will show, yeah, should I? Yeah, I will show it uh, now and maybe you can ask uh, questions about this experience. So let's see, it's an eight minutes. And uh, now there's the time when I uh, apologize because it sucks to me to show it that way because it's an installation, should be very immersive should be big, the sound, blah, 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 but if uh, we are here, so we're gonna see. <laughs> 